Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Behind the Servants. Today we're going to be covering another real historical female, the Caldean cheerleader and sharpshooting Deadwood girl Calamity Jane. I've read up on how fate has decided to handle this character and holy smokes it's almost as bad as Gouda Gouda. The whole servant universe motif is very fun and silly, but they take more than a few liberties with these characters. But without further ado, let's look into Miss Calamity Jane. Now, before I actually begin, I want to explain something about Calamity Jane and many of the other uh, servants of her ilk, like Billy and William Tell. They are what is known as folk heroes. While they were real people, their stories are oftentimes aggrandized. This does not mean that they are lies or fake, but rather, when one person's told the story to another, the story got bigger and bigger. So throughout this video, you're going to hear me use the words like allegedly and supposedly and etc. I'm going to do my best to cross-examine what the story is and let you know what I personally believe to be the truth. But let's be real, if historians are still conflicted on this, then don't take the hot take of a VTuber with a bachelor's degree in English as the end-all be-all. Anyway, let's get started. Now, fake players know Calamity Jane is the bubbly big sister like Ditz. This is unfortunately completely off from the truth. Calamity Jane was another hardened westerner who lived in the same era as another fate favorite, the notorious BTK, that's Billy the Kid. Calamity Jane was born on May 1st of 1852 as Martha Jane Canary. She would be the eldest of six siblings and would eventually be the one to raise them all at the age of 14. Her mother and father both would pass away within a close proximity, leaving her as the woman of the house. As a result, she had to harden herself in the unforgiving western environment. In 1867, she took what was left of her family and moved to the Wyoming Territory to a place called Piedmont. Now, being a 14-year-old girl with five other mouths to feed is a challenge regardless of the time period that you're in, but she supposedly took on as many odd jobs as she possibly could, including but not limited to a cook, waitress, dance hall girl, nurse, ox team driver, dishwasher, and allegedly a prostitute. The prostitution angle is hotly disputed, but the truth on it is lost to history. However, what we can gather from all this is that she had cared for others. It is not an uncommon story for the time period for family to turn on or abandon family in favor of serving themselves. Jane, however, stuck to the proper role as a big sister, and we see this reflected in her in-game character. Once her family was settled and in a better place, Jane took a more full-time position as a scout for General Custer in 1870. This occupation as a scout is where her first skill, Sabotage, comes from. During this time, she was given a service uniform and began dressing like a man, something that she would become notorious for throughout her life. During her time in the military, she was a part of the large campaign of settling the West. For those of you who are not familiar with American history, this included the misplacing of the indigenous people to reservations to make room for railroads, towns, and forts. The Native Americans weren't going to take this robbery of their civilization lying down and fought constantly with the incoming settlers. Jane was a participant in this large movement of the native people, and the general she served under, General Custer, is a notorious figure during this time as well. Jane would receive her nickname during one of these skirmishes with the natives. The story, as she tells it, goes as follows. Quote, It was during this campaign in 1872-73 that I was christened Calamity Jane. It was on a Goose Creek, Wyoming, where the town of Sheridan is now located. Captain Egon was in command of the post. We were ordered out to quell an uprising of the Indians and were out for several days. Had numerous skirmishes during which six of the soldiers were killed and severely wounded. When on returning to the post, we were ambushed about a mile and a half from our destination. When fired upon, Captain Egan was shot. I was riding in advance and on hearing the firing, turned into my saddle and saw the captain reeling in his saddle as though it was about to fall. I turned my horse and galloped back with all haste to his side and got there in time to catch him as he was falling. I lifted him onto my horse in front of me and succeeded in getting him safely to the fort. Captain Egan, on recovering, laughingly said, I name you Calamity Jane, the heroine of the plains. I've borne that name up to the present time. End quote. However, this claim is also disputed, and a man named Captain Jack Crawford from the same regiment claimed that Jane was only popular because she was generous and that she never once saw combat. However, to that, however, this claim came out in 1904. For any of you who write or study history, you know that claims made years later are rarely to be taken seriously as oftentimes they include embellishments and are said to defame or to take away from the person's life. The other red flag to be considered from this claim is that it was one made after Calamity Jane's death, so she herself had no way of defending against it. This has been History Research Tips with Klidge. Now, back to your regularly scheduled program. During her time in the military, she did rack up quite a reputation. One such anecdote is that she was ordered to deliver dispatches across the Platte River, and that she swam 90 miles to make sure those dispatches made it to the right hands. She became incredibly ill after this excursion, and it temporarily put her out of commission. This act is where she gets her third skill, Galaxy Messenger, from. 
However, the historical discrepancies of potential that it's all a tall tale make it chance-based, which is a clever way to weave that in. Just FYI, her third skill is entirely an invention from the Servant universe, so I won't get into it. Another story about Jane, and the one that verifies that she was, in fact, known as Calamity Jane, was when she arrived in Deadwood with the Heacock wagon train in 1876. A headline in a newspaper read, Calamity Jane has arrived. Now, two things were brought up in that last sentence that probably stick out to people familiar with the Old West. Heacock and Deadwood. Let's start with Heacock. Wild Bill Heacock is a famous Old West icon. He could stand to have an entire video dedicated to him, but until he's in the game, I'm not going to do that. So what we need to know for now is that he was a lawman and a scout and viewed as a kind of folk hero. Calamity Jane and Wild Bill supposedly hit it off pretty well with each other, and there's a claim that has been put forth that both of Jane's kids were fathered by Bill. The problem with this is that we don't have enough evidence to point one way or another, however we do know that the two were well acquainted. We'll get into that later. If you know Wild Bill Heacock, then you are most definitely aware of his fate and what a big part of his legacy was. Wild Bill, despite being a folk hero himself, still had enemies, and as the story goes, whenever he sat in a saloon he'd always keep his back to the wall. The one time that he didn't, he was playing poker, and a man by the name of Jack Bacall shot him in the back of the head, killing him. Wild Bill Heacock was holding two black eights and two aces, now commonly known as the Dead Man's Hand. This is the animation that appears in Calamity Jane's Noble Phantasm. Rumor has it that as McCall fled, he was chased down by Calamity Jane, wielding a butcher's cleaver. McCall was initially let go in Deadwood, found not guilty for reason of vigilante justice, as Wild Bill had killed his brother. However, he was caught in Wyoming and tried for murder, as the trial in Deadwood was considered to be null and void. Oh, I promised to talk about Deadwood, but instead let's talk about Jane's exploits there. Jane stayed in Deadwood after the death of Heacock and became somewhat of a local character. During a smallpox epidemic that hit Deadwood, she worked as a nurse to help bring people back from the brink of death. This was quite the sight to see for many of the folks, as Jane was notoriously a hard-boiled woman. When a traveling group of thespians came to the town to perform, Jane took a friend of hers to go see it, and was so unamused that she spat in the lead actress's eye, and her friend blew out the lamps with his pistol. This was all done to the laughter and enjoyment of the town, who shared their sentiment about the show. Her buddy would then be killed the following day in a bank stick-up. This story has likely been embellished to a degree, but there are records to indicate that it is at least partially true. She also famously saved a coach of seven people, one driver and six passengers, from a band of natives who were chasing them down. She jumped the stagecoach and guided the crew to a safe area. Despite appearing to be an indomitable woman, Calamity Jane had one weakness. Booze. Much like many a great hero, Jane loved the bottle and often found herself lost or confused after going off on a bender. One famous example is when she started drinking and rented a horse and buggy for a joyride and woke up 90 miles away. This unabashed love for the bottle would follow Jane for her entire life and would be what inevitably kills her. But I digress. Jane left Deadwood in 1877 with the 7th Cavalry and helped in the construction of Fort Meade. She would try her hand at prospecting as it was the age of gold discovery in the West, but she had very little success in this endeavor. So instead of striking it rich, she decided to keep it humble and started a ranch in Miles City, Montana with an inn attached. Here is where the waters get muddy once again. One story claims that she married a man by the name of Clinton Burke in 1885. They had a daughter together in 1887, moved to Boulder, Colorado, and opened up another inn until 1893. Now, this is most likely the true version of her life. There is the other story, as mentioned prior, that the kids were from Wild Bill Heacock, that this can all be traced back through a Bible that had Jane, Heacock, two ministers, and several witnesses' signatures in it as proof of marriage. This person claimed to be their descendant is named Jean Heacock Burkhart McCormick. Here's the problem. We do not actually know, definitively, who Jane's children's fathers were. We can speculate, but unfortunately the genealogy is somewhat lost. To step back a bit, we don't even know if the kids who Jane claimed were even hers. One story about Jane is that in the late 1880s, she returned to Deadwood with a young girl claiming that she was her daughter, and that she needed to raise money for her education. The townspeople, being familiar with Jane, were happy to chip in. Jane then spent a good portion of that money on booze and skipped town the next day. This mystery girl is possibly the daughter that she had with Burke, if the tale is true. There is a corroborating witness named Esteline Bennett, who claims that she witnessed this event, but contended that Jane was not trying to scam the town, she was just addicted to the bottle. However, it's lost to history who 
Calamity Jane's kids actually were. Jane was also very famously a member of Buffalo Bill's Wild West show, which toured America bringing a slice of the Old West to the entirety of the country. Jane worked as a storyteller, sharpshooter, and horse rider for these shows, but her pension for the bottle led her to eventually being fired. She then fell somewhat to the bottom of the bottle, becoming a useless drunk and acting like a maniac for lack of better terms. An example of this is that she once made an Irish police officer dance the jig at gunpoint while she was completely wasted. Allegedly. By 1903, this poor lifestyle eventually led to her losing most of her belongings and working as a cook in a brothel in Belfort called Madame Dora Dufran's Brothel. She eventually left this job to head to a place called Terry, South Dakota, which was near Deadwood. However, she would get drunk on the train ride to the point that she was nearly dead. Her last requests were to know what the date was, August 22nd, 1903, and to be buried by Wild Bill Heacock, overlooking the town of Deadwood. She was only 51. Her coffin was sealed by a man who she had saved when he was a boy during the smallpox epidemic. The life of Calamity Jane was truly as Old West as it gets. Her life and exploits were built up by her and her alone, and despite how impossible some of her tales would be, she would keep entire crowds on the edge of their seat as she wove tale upon tale. While one may want to feel sad about how her life came to an end, going from a living legend to dying broken in pain, it is also important to remember that she lived the life that SHE wanted to live. Calamity Jane only ever did what she wanted, living free and dying young, and really, isn't that the American way? Thank you to everybody who stuck through with me to the end, I really do appreciate it. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you enjoyed it, please like the video as it really does help. If you want to hear about a certain historical figure in FGO in more detail, let me know that as well. Subscribe if you are so inclined, check out my Twitch for significantly less structured content, and until next time, keep your chin up. Peace.